Oh, I've been waiting for this. Transform. Hey everybody, Mass for the Nate Four, and welcome to Stream Seven Hundred and Twenty Six. And uh, Persona Four Arena Ultimax has been re-released. It's in the world for everyone. Hooray! It's been out for a few days now. But today, we won't be playing Wi-Fi, online, ranked matches, and all that stuff. We are playing story mode! For those who haven't experienced the story of Persona 4 slash Golden, I highly recommend educating yourselves with that information before uh, you hop into this game, or at least watch this LP. Or if you don't care about spoilers, that's perfectly fine. But, uh, yeah, we are finally tackling Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. One thing I was worried about when this game got announced was like, Oh, man. Persona 4 Arena actually canonically comes before Ultimax. And I kind of wanted to do Persona 4 Arena story for, like, the canonical order for this Persona 4 experience. But luckily, they included the Persona 4 Arena story in this, which is pretty hype. So today we'll be tackling Yu Narukami's story. I think he has his own story. Let me double check. I didn't even open this yet. Uh, technically I did, but uh, yeah. We'll be doing Yu Narukami's. Also, I put my, my settings to the lowest possible quality because for some reason, like when I record this game and play it, I can run whatever quality I need, but when I try to quote-unquote stream it, it gets a little slow, so... I guess compromise, or I just need a more powerful PC. But yeah, we'll be tackling you Narukami's story. These stories are normally if just a few hours long, so we should be able to finish this all in one stream. But yeah, expect a lot of visual novel reading, with very little fighting in between. Hopefully the audio's good. I'm looking at the audio levels right now. It's kind of quiet because they're playing the Velvet Room. Auto read. Uh, I'm using the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller on my PC game. Okay, the floor, the ceiling, the furnishing, everything is blue. It's quite unlike what I normally see through my day. And yet my heart is mysteriously calm. I recognize a slight rumbling as an engine and realize that I'm in a car. Or rather, someplace else I recognize. Oops. To the <laughs> Let me turn on auto-read. I think it'll be better that way. I think it's that way. The old man with a bizarre face sitting before me makes an expression that appears to be a smile. Sitting quietly next to the old man is a woman as beautiful and delicate as an ice sculpture. Ah, it seems we have a guest with an intriguing destiny. <laughs> My name is Igor. <gasps> I am delighted to make your acquaintance. The Velvet Room. Igor. Even though I'm barely conscious, I remember that this is not the first time I've heard those names. I see. This is a dream. This happened in the past. I've been in this room before. If my memory is correct, what he says next is... This place exists between dream and reality, mind and matter. It is a room that only those who are bound by a contract may enter. It may be that such a fate awaits you in the near future. The words I expect to hear fall from the old man's mouth. I'm surprised that I still remember them. Another me, the other non the dream, can help but smile at that. <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself? I remember this too. When I said my name here, it forged a contract with them. And so I answer. Don't tell me I gotta put... Okay, there you go. Yunarukami, his official canonical name. When I open my eyes, the light is so blinding that I have to squint. For a moment, I can't figure out where I am, and I look around. Right. I was on my way back. I muttered to myself and look out the window. 
The sky is somewhat cloudy, unfortunately, but the scenery is as peaceful as always. It seems that I fell asleep on the train headed to the countryside where I spent the last year. Inaba. If I recall correctly, when I first came to that town, it was an afternoon just like this. I dozed off in the same way back then and was summoned to the Velvet Room. That was when Igor said that misfortunes would be befall me, and just as he foretold, I was dragged into an outrageous murder mystery. That was no ordinary case. The Midnight Channel, Shadows, and Personas, the power of the heart. I saw things that could scarcely be believed. But I made memories there that can never be replaced as well. We gained the power of the Personas, and we suffered together. I stood with my friends on the investigation team against these misfortunes and fought alongside them. There's no way I could have overcome such ordeals without their help. I wonder what everyone's been up to. After solving the mystery, it was decided that I would leave Inabus as my parents would be returning from overseas around the same time. It's been about two months since I last saw them all, as they said goodbye to me at the train station. I decided to stay at the Dojima residence during Golden Week, so that I could spend the holiday with my friends. Of course, my uncle was happy to hear this, and on his only daughter, Donako, should be glad to see me too. Damn it! I still haven't picked up Yosuke's gift. Well, it is something quite particular, I guess. Actually, I'd received a call from Teddy, one of my investigation team friends, this morning. The details of the conversation were a bit troublesome. Hello! Is this Sensei? Yeah, what's up? I'm really sorry to bring this up, but I forgot to tell you something very important. I have a special request for the souvenirs I'm sure you'll be bringing your best friend. Teddy, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to tell people what you want them to bring you as souvenirs. <laughs> I already have souvenirs for everyone, but... Oh well. Sure enough, Teddy was only asking for some snacks that aren't sold in Inaba, so it wasn't much trouble. Ah, but there was one problem. Oh, and one more thing. Can I ask you to pick up something for Yosuke, too? I was planning on bringing something for everyone anyway, but go ahead. Cool! Well, Yosuke's been down in the dumps after his mommy burned his favorite nurse. What? She was what I called scorching hot! <laughs> Just kidding. A nurse? Ah, oh, come on, Sensei. You know what I'm talking about. His nurse magazine with the chest examinations and the bear behinds. I see. Uh, <laughs> and you expect me to buy him a replacement? <laughs> of course, silly. People coming to visit are supposed to bring presents. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I was planning to head back tomorrow, but since we're meeting up early, I decided to go back today. Can you pass that on to everyone? Aha! Then the sexy nurses will be arriving even sooner! It'll be like, like, Sensei, we have an emergency patient. Yusuke will be so happy! Okay then, we'll be waiting for you! I'm a little worried now. I hope he isn't telling everyone something that would give them the wrong idea. <laughs> well, I should just call again once I get there. But in the end... Nurses, huh? I wasn't able to pick one up for him. How can I put it? I'd feel bad for Yosuke if I gave him that magazine. And every time he opened it, his friend's face kept popping up in his head. <laughs> That's fair. And I have to think Yosuke has his pride, too. He doesn't need me buying him this stuff. Then again, this is Yosuke we're talking about. I'm sure he'll understand if I explain my reasoning. Probably. See, it was Teddy who told me to buy you the nurse magazine! Oh. End of the line already. It looks like I've been asleep for a lot longer than I thought. Just as I thought, 
Just as that thought came to me, a certain worry crossed my mind. If I had that dream of the Velvet Room, does that mean I'm going to be dragged into another adventure? Hmm... Nah, I shouldn't think about such things. It's probably just going to be a regular old Golden Week. Igor had said I'm delighted to make your acquaintance after all, so it's nothing but a dream. It's quite misleading, since I've had dreams of being summoned into that room ever since. The train begins to slow, and I take that as my cue to gather my belongings from the luggage rack above me. When the train comes to a complete stop and the doors open, even the smell of the wind evokes a sense of nostalgia. Ha ha ha, I think I'm getting a little too sentimental. I step out of the platform with a wiry, or a wire smile. I think that's how you say it. Weary? Wire? Bookmark! I'm standing in front of the train station, but this town is as quiet as it's always been. I realize that the sun has started to set, and the orange sky envelops the world. Now, what should I do? Today is May 2nd. According to the calendar, the latter half of the holidays will begin tomorrow. I told Dojima-san that I was going to arrive today, but it seems he's been too busy with work to come get me. Ryotaro Dojima, he's my uncle. I stayed with him last year. He's a detective with the Inaba police, and he's raising his elementary school-aged daughter, Nanako, by himself. It seems that he was suddenly contacted by a detective from the Metropolitan Police Department regarding last year's cases, and will have to work late. Man, he's still working on those cases? That's crazy. That, I think it kind of makes sense. What happened last year is very serious, so I guess it's not too surprising he's so busy. He shouldn't have worried about it. I recall how apologetic he sounded over the phone. Can't help smiling. I told him that I knew the way over from the station, but a bag pack of necessities and souvenirs for everyone turns to be quite a load. Nanako must be waiting for me alone at the house, so I want to get there as soon as possible, too. To be honest, I don't know when the bus will come. Maybe I should just call for a taxi? Just as I'm thinking this... Nanako? Big bro! Nanako! It is Nanako! There's no way I'd mistake her. You came to meet me all on your own? Why did she come to the station all by herself? True, the Dojima residence is within walking distance, but it couldn't have been easy for her. And even though it's still light out right now, it will be dark soon, and the country roads are barely lit. What would she have done if I hadn't been here? Probably go back home. <laughs> I'm about to voice my concerns, but Mon Nanako sounds slightly proud when she says, Don't worry, Dad knows about it. He gave me money for the bus. He said he couldn't make it. So I came instead. Welcome back, big bro. I wanted to see you so much. <laughs> Thanks. I'm happy to see you again, too. I see. She must have wanted to show me that she's grown up, too. She is around that age, after all. For a moment, I'm surprised that Dojima-san let her do this. But I kind of imagine what kind of conversation took place. Nanako had always been a capable girl. But over the past year, her housekeeping skills have improved greatly. She's proven herself to be very reliable. She takes the lead in many things within the house, and even Dojima-san can't compete with her sometimes. I can easily imagine that scene in my mind. And it's true that I'm glad someone came to welcome me. I take Nanako-chan's hand, and we begin walking side by side. Well, no sense standing around here. What's in the fridge at home? I bought a ton of stuff since you were coming to visit. Will it raise my courage? If Nanako says so, then he must have really bought a lot. Nan oh wait, Dojima-san said that he'd pick, us pick up dinner for us, but if that's the case, maybe we should put something together. Something to go with it. I asked Nanako what she wants to eat, and she looks back with a twinkle in her eyes. Are you gonna cook dinner? Ooh, I wanna help. Nanako and I make small talk while we walk through Inaba together for the first time in a little while. Being here like this makes me feel as if I've gone back in time to a year ago.
After we get back to the Dojima home, I hurry and unpack my belongings before heading to the kitchen. Nanako helps me out as diligently as she had claimed earlier. The way she mixes the eggs seems more skillful than before. You're such a good girl, Nanako. Good evening. This is the Evening Journal with news for May 2nd. Our top story is on the domestic airline that was hijacked yesterday. What? <laughs> the TV delivery room echoes through the house. Thinking back on it, it was quite often in this place. When I first came to Inaba, Nanako was practically being raised by the television. There had been this odd sense of distance between us around that time. She hadn't started calling me Big Bro, and we didn't cook together like we're doing now. It's the little things that brings back memories. Somebody hijacked a plane, bro! Whereas we're both done making dinner, Dojima-san arrives with some deluxe sushi. Nanako quickly gets up and rushes to the door. She seems so happy when her father comes home. Dojima-san apologizes about the sudden increase in his workload. And we all sit down at the table and begin eating. <laughs> Just like old times. <laughs> Being here like this makes it feel like the two months I was gone never happened at all. There's a warm atmosphere. As if I've always been a part of this family and lived here with them for my entire life. I thank both of them from the deep of my heart. And after I give them the souvenirs I brought for them, we enjoy chatting with each other as a family. So wholesome. Phew. Another familiar room. This is the room that was prepared for me on the second floor of the Dojima residence. Nanako has fallen asleep after all this excitement. After carrying her to her room, I tell my uncle that I'll be going to bed early as well, as I have plans. No? <laughs> What's up, Devin? All he said was okay, gesturing towards the second floor. I'm a little perplexed by this, but I have my suspicions, and as I open the door to my old room, it seems I was right. The room is no different than it have been when I was living here. It's exactly the same as it was when I left Inaba. I close the door with a feeling of wishfulness. As I sit down on my sofa and consider my uncle's thoughtfulness, I sigh in exhaustion from the long journey. I'll be able to see my friends tomorrow. Considering that there are still several days left in this holiday, it may be nice to leave early tomorrow and go visit the shopping district. It's raining. Yeah, there's a lot of plot to go through. Especially since uh, it's Persona and they love to do a lot of talking. You know, two hours of cutscenes before gameplay will make a little... Wait, did he just say it's raining? Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, they talk way too much in their heads. <laughs> if you look at the turned off TV at midnight on a rainy night, you'll see your soulmate. Discovering that this rumor was actually true was the first reason why I became involved in the murder investigation last year. But the person who actually appears on the Midnight Channel isn't your soulmate. It's the next victim. After discovering this, we all nervously sat before TVs on rainy nights in order to solve the case. <laughs> that brings back some memories. Nothing will show anymore, though. Haha, <laughs> that's true, because we got rid of the fog! Will nothing really appear, though? I strongly have doubts. Why would I think that? After we solved that case, we all confirmed that the Midnight Channel wasn't appearing anymore. The empty screen stays silent. So why? Just in case. It's not going to turn on. There's just no way! The more I think about it, the more I feel my resolve faded. Yes, this is my first time. I peer into the TV screen as if something has drawn me into it. The only thing I see is my reflection in the dark glass of the CRT television. Or so I thought. Yeah, thanks. Ah! Okay, they guys, are. the cutscene? Friends! Yes, the cutscenes in this foes. game are so loud, I apologize. Oh my goodness, bro. The desperate fighting program amongst high school students. A new legend is Probably about to start! <laughs> I tried fixing them in the settings, but I can't. Come on down! Nobody 
touches his precious Nanako, the sister complex kingpin of steel, Yu Narukami! It's only what? natural. Wage slave in the boonies by day, hero by night, oh, hey, Captain slave. Misanta Mouth, Yosuke Hanamura! Yeah, yeah, Everything that bores me has gotta go! A spunky dragon with deadly legs, the carnivore who's discarded womanhood, Shie Satunaka! You need to eat more meat! Discarded me. womanhood? Please oh, escort no. me to the ring, my prince! The unconquerable Snow Black, Yukiko Amagi! I'll finish you in one strike! Blooming roses and bulging muscles, the blood curdling beefcake emperor, Kanji Tatsumi! I've been to realms I mean, of romance! The body of a but child, the a brain of a genius, game, the so 2000 IQ killjoy detective, so, uh, Naoto Shirogane! Is this an army of idiots? Fight! And survive towards the one throne waiting at the end! The P1 Grand Prix, where fierce fights will be fought! The battle begins tonight! Do you imagine just Narukami looking at his TV and seeing that? Oh wait, we don't have to imagine it. It's happening right now. That's girl detected. <laughs> yeah, you're right. We did see. <laughs> what on what earth was that? that? <laughs> I love how they're just all watching the TV. Hey, Narukami's in town. Maybe we should just watch the TV for old times' sake. What? Sister complex kingpin of steel? Was that me? Sister Complex Kinpin of Steel. I'm impressed. There's so much there's so much wrong with that phrase. I don't know where to begin. No, I shouldn't be thinking about that. How's the gameplay audio right now? Is it too quiet? I can raise it. I, I know the cutscene music's gonna like destroy our ears, but I'll take that risk. Hurry to make sure the TV's unplugged in. That was the midnight channel? What was it actually showing was rather ridiculous, but thinking back. Everything the Midnight Channel showed last year didn't make much sense either. Seems alright for now? Okay. Suddenly gripped my by attention. The Midnight Channel is appearing again. Have to find out why. I pull out my cell phone and search for Yosuke's number. Let's see, H. Hanamura Yosuke. I quickly hit the call button. Does everyone know about this? Is everyone aware that the Midnight Channel is still being broadcasted? Do they know that it's showing us? And that we've been given taglines that can only be described as uncharitable? Uh, hello, this is Yosuke. Yosuke? It's nothing. I just freaked out when you called all of a sudden. Yeah, that's it. What's up? Hey, when do you want to meet? <laughs> I can tell what's going on just by the sound of his voice. <laughs> Yosuke knows about what's happening on the Midnight Channel just now, and he's trying to hide that from me. <laughs> Considering I've been out of Inaba for a while, I bet he's still trying to keep me from worrying about it. There's no need for him to be concerned about that. Then again, I can kind of understand how he feels. I am his friend, after all. And that's not why I was calling. <laughs> that's not why I was calling. Huh? I can easily hear Yosuke's panicking on the other side of the phone. He's probably surprised that I saw the Midnight Channel, when I shouldn't even be in Inaba right now. He must be thinking that the Midnight Channel is now appearing on a national- Oh no! No! Yosuke, that's not true! It's just happening in Inaba! At least, I think it is. Did Teddy not tell you? Since we're meeting up early tomorrow, I decided to come today. I figured you wouldn't think I could have seen it, so I gave you a call. Uh, well... I assumed you weren't here yet, so I didn't want to rely on you. <laughs> you haven't changed. So how about it? You're not going to leave this be, are you, Captain Rosantamo? <laughs> <laughs> right on that part. I <laughs> called you a sister complex kingpin. <laughs> Mine's not that bad. You think? Oh, I ought to tell you, that program's not the only strange thing lately. What? Hey, Rise and Kanji aren't here either. They disappeared. Oh my goodness, they disappeared. For a moment, I'm at a loss for words. Not only has the Midnight Channel come back on, we've lost contact with three of our friends. I have a bad feeling about this. I like how chill you is with this title. That's that's you and Arakami in a nutshell. <laughs> All right, we should get together tomorrow like we planned. Yeah, at the Junes Food Court. Welcome back, partner. What's your title? I don't know. My t you mean like stream title? Aggro what? Oh, you mean like on for ranks or online? I haven't added one yet. No matter what has happened, our friends may be in danger. 
If that's so, then there's only one thing to do. Hmm? Speaking of things I have to do. Oh, right. Sorry to say, I forgot to pick up your souvenir. A souvenir? Don't even worry about it, man. You sure? I thought you were really looking forward to Oh, no, Narukami's trolling! N nurses? <laughs> It's okay to like nurses, by the way. <laughs> yeah, Teddy asked me to get it for you. He said you were crushed that they got burned. Oh, wait, this is all... I didn't know you were into nurses. Ah, 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 shut up! That's enough! <laughs> yeah, you're trying to wind me up, aren't you? Stay home, you jerk. <laughs> Stay home, I'll figure out this case myself. At least it seems like he understands about a souvenir. In any case, the preparations have been made. Tomorrow, I'll meet with everyone to sort out whatever information we have on this situation. If we have to, we'll go back into that world. Be best if this was all just our imaginations. <laughs> just our imaginations, guys. Yeah, that's it. Unfortunately, we know that the Midnight Channel wouldn't have appeared without a reason. I should make sure I'm ready for tomorrow and get some rest. We should also look out for that gas station attendant. Hopefully, he's not back. <laughs> Da, 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 da. This place is lively as always. I look across the food court on Juness's roof for the first time in a while. I keep forgetting this part of Juness is on a roof. Mainly because we don't really see the rest of the mall. Plus, because it's Golden Week as well, I feel like it's busier than usual. I happen to run into Yosuke at the elevators. We briefly greet each other. Guys are weird like that. <laughs> the closer we are, the more simpler interactions when we meet each other face to face. That has some truth to it, actually. The two of us step out of the food court. We immediately find Yukiko and Chie. They wave back at us past the playground area from a bench they're sitting on. Good to see you guys again. Welcome back! We missed you! The guest of honor is finally here! You're looking well. Welcome back. Um, should we... Oh, he already knows about the Midnight Channel thing. He's actually the one who called me up about it. Oh, I see. This has turned into a pretty thrown-together reunion, hasn't it? But I'm glad you came. We chat some more while we all sit down. Then Yosuke stands up and clears his throat loudly. He's probably been waiting for the right moment to say something. He hasn't mentioned anything to me, but I can easily guess what he's about to say. We all look towards Yosuke. Well, it sucks that we can't hang out more before jumping into another mystery, but to celebrate our partner's return, I hereby reinstate the investigation team in response to the Midnight Channel going back on the air last night. Oh, the team is back! Just hearing that name again gets me all fired up. Yeah, let's do this! Uh, I don't think the applause is necessary. <laughs> Why not? It's been two months since we last saw each other, after all. Chie and Yukiko start chuckling when I shrug. And though Yosuke seems saddened at that, he still ends up laughing along as well. It's a relief to see that they're the same as always. But, because of that, it makes me even more worried about the friends that aren't here right now. We can't start slacking off. We begin to sort through the information that we know about already. Let's get cracking. I mean, this is no laughing matter. Oh, dude, I love it when they try to figure out, like, the paranormal activity going on. The supernatural. Oh, I got a hold of Naotokun, but I didn't tell her about this stuff. She told me she couldn't make it today because of her job, so I didn't want to worry her. She seemed pretty bummed that she couldn't be here, too. If she has a reason for not being here, we can still contact her, and Naoto should be fine. That leaves Teddy, Rise, and Kanji. Not hearing back from them after an entire day has passed isn't normal at all. The relationship between their sudden disappearances and the reappearance of the Midnight Channel last night disturbs me. Um, one thing's been bothering me. The picture on the TV was very clear last night. Yeah, going by the pattern from last year, it wouldn't be that clear until after the victim entered the TV. Hey, isn't this the first time a big group of people was shown together? Plus, we're still here. Why us anyway? And what's up with those insulting descriptions? 
Chie seems pretty angry about it. Many of the locals know about the rumor of the, Min the Midnight Channel. In other words, this trouble, this trouble in broadcast has already been seen by who knows how many other people. From what I've been to, the moment Chie tried to ask another student about the Midnight Channel, the other girl ran away with a look of fear on her face. <laughs> Oh, no. No surprise that Chie would be angry. But in the end... What bothers me most is Teddy. He was acting like the host of that show. Yeah, and we can't find him. This smells fishy. Then again, I doubt he would play a prank like this for no reason. I guess we'll just have to go inside the TV and find out what's going on. That's right. Go inside the TV. Out of everything... That was the element that shook our common sense the most out of everything we experienced last year. Actually, the murders in last year's events happened in another world inside the television. This world is filled with monsters called Shadows that are born from people's hearts. Because my friends and I gained Personas, the power to defeat these Shadows, we were able to enter the TV screens and fight them. Won't we be stuck in there without Teddy to give us an exit? But even we Persona users, users will find it extremely difficult to leave that world on our own. In order to come back, we need to find the exit TV that our friend Teddy was capable of creating. Uh-huh, not so. I've had Teddy keep the exit TV out on that side. Look at you, all prepared! I mean, think about it. What if we were half asleep and fell into a TV when Teddy wasn't over there? Isn't that a scary thought? Like anyone would be that clumsy. Anyway, it sounds like it's safe for us to go investigate then. Hey, Yosuke thinking ahead. No matter what the reason, it's reassuring to know that we have an exit strategy ready for us. To be honest, I almost fell into it the first time it appeared in my room, after all. Yeah, there's no doubt that something's going on in there. Is everyone ready? We're all good to go. To tell the truth, I had a hunch that this was going to happen. We all share a look to confirm our intentions. All of them nod back. I could see the seriousness in their eyes. Even though there was a two-month gap since I last saw them, they still continue to put their trust in me. I feel a slight sense of pride as I stand up from the bench. The large screen TV in the electronics department is directly below the food court. That was the entrance we always used last year. Hopefully nobody's looking around and sees us go in it. It's a holiday, so the store's full of people. I feel like things are picking up around town. Hey, that's Ari! I just saw Ari! You know, it's been a while since last time. I'm a little nervous. Get ready! Huh? The customers are going away! Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Let's go! Yeah. yeah! Like, what would happen if customers did see that? Like, what would they say? What would they do, bro? <gasps> Isn't this different from usual? Oh no! What do we do? What can we do? We can't stop now! I hear a voice. It's a woman's voice. Sounds familiar to me. This voice is... <gasps> Welcome to the Velvet Room. I don't sense that distinctive float and feeling that I usually have when I enter the TV world. When I concentrate, I realize that I must be sitting in a chair. The moment I open my eyes, I see a vibrant blue. The Velvet Room. I visited this place an untold number of times last year. And once more in my dreams yesterday, I never thought I would return to this place. 
Huh? It's not a dream this time? What's going on? Didn't my contract end already? Igor. Usually sits front and center. is nowhere to be seen. The one to greet me is the woman with silver hair. Margaret, a.k.a. Best Waifu. Could this be a personal summoning, then? This happened a few times last year, too. Margaret smiles as if she senses my suspicions. This room is tied to your fate. Nothing that occurs here is meaningless. Though you reached an end to one journey, you now find yourself here again. This shows that you will once again be faced with a question. A question? And something really is going on? Another mystery has appeared. We're about to get dragged into it again. Could that be what she means? From here on, what befalls you will upset your status quo. It is true that you've opened the door once already. But all things change. Nothing ever remains the same. What you gained before will change over time as well. You will have to face them once again. Face them? Again? The first thing that Margaret's words stir up in my mind is the sight of my friends' smiling, face smiling faces. Is that going to change? No. That can't be true. And face them again? That's impossible. Once I wake up and leave this room, I should be with my friends. There's no need to jump to conclusions. But Margaret appears to have an anticipated my thoughts and smiles while narrowing her eyes. Show me how you will proceed down the path that awaits beyond the door you've opened. My vision wavers and the blue light before me vanishes quickly. Wait. I still need to know what you mean by those words. Where am I? Where did I get thrown to when I left that blue room? The scenery is so unexpected that I'm at a loss. This is a school. It's the music room of Yasogami High. I attended the school with my friends until recently. There's no mistake in it. We entered the TV together. So, why am I here? No, that's not right. No, wait. This has to be the TV world. The graffiti on the ground. Shoes placed like they're some kind of ritual. The eerily shining eyes of the portraits on the wall. The more carefully I look, the more I realize that this place is not the real Yasugami High. Most of all, I sense no warmth from this place like I always did from the students who would come and go from here. This is a fake. It's definitely not the school I attended. But what happened to the turn what happened to turn the world inside the TV to this? On top of that, we entered the TV from our usual entrance. I ended up in a completely different place. This has never happened before. I also realized that my friends aren't with me either. Did we somehow get separated? I start to feel chills down my spine. Look around. Hello, sorry for the wait. Greetings, boys and girls of Yasugami. The P1 Grand Prix is about to begin. There's no need for manners or courtesy or anything today, so let it all hang out. Tell us how you really feel. What the? Is that you, Rise? I shout out questions, but she doesn't answer. This is Risei Kujikawa, one of our friends on the investigation team that we couldn't contact. Does she not hear me, or is she choosing not to respond? As I ask myself this, I hear different voices echoing as well. I look around in surprise. These voices, not just from one or two people. I see countless students staring at me from the hallways, the entrance, everywhere I turn. Huh? But first, the general has a few words for you all. What's going on? Why are there so many people inside the TV world? 
Before I can think of any answers, Ritsei makes another announcement. And if on cue, the monitor in the music room turns on. What appeared on it was Teddy. He was wearing a strange hat and cape, just like he did on the Midnight Channel last night. First Ritsei, now Teddy. What are they doing? Again. That's the same bizarre tournament that was shown on the Midnight Channel. Then, is Teddy really the one behind this insanity? Teddy, what's going on here? We came to look for you and Risei and... Ah, always with the talking, Sensei. It's a big waste of time. Less talk and more fighting. With the next challenger, come on down! Teddy looks away and makes a dismissive gesture. Smoke suddenly bursts out from underneath me and robs me of any visibility. Is there someone beyond that white curtain? Eventually, my field of vision begins to clear. I keep my guard up, expecting anything. But who should appear but Yosuke? Though I hadn't expected to run into him like this, I'm relieved to see that he's safe. Teddy did say something about a challenger just a moment ago. I recall that the P1 Grand Prix that appeared on the Midnight Channel looked a lot like some kind of fighting competition. Wait, am I supposed to fight Yosuke now? That's not funny at all. Great, they're expecting you and me to fight. <laughs> Looks like. Sheesh, what's Teddy thinking? I won't let you get all buddy-buddy with each other. These battles are fought to the death. Only the victor can proceed. Wait, we both have weaknesses it's against each other. Far enough, Teddy. We're not going to play along with that. I look over at Yosuke, hoping that he would agree with me. But he doesn't appear interested in what I have to say. Oh, really? I guess he should declare me the winner then. Yosuke? What? You don't plan on fighting, right? That means I win by default. That was not what I was expecting to hear. What's gone into you, Yosuke? You have some reason to be talking like this? I can't figure out what's going on. Yosuke continued to speak in a carefree manner. It said something that I simply couldn't believe. Oh, but is that okay with you? I mean, since Nanako-chan's here and all? Nanako's here? Wait, really? You haven't seen her? She's with Teddy. That can't be. I saw Nanako back at the house when I left this morning. And even then, Nanako can't enter the TV world on her own. But, she's in this world? I can't believe it for a moment. But, what if it's true? Just coming into this world can tire a person out very quickly. On top of that, if someone who can't use a persona comes here, Sometimes even be fatal. Where is she? Yosuke, where's Nanako? Oh, what's gotten into you, partner? No need to get hysterical. Why are you so calm about this? You know what happened to her last time she came here. Yeah, she died. <laughs> Nanako did come to this world once, last year. It was not something any one of us would have wanted to happen. That was the start of a whole chain of events. Remembering them is heart-wrenching, even now. So why? No. Even then, it might be wrong for me to lash out at Yosuke for the way he's acting. Calm down. I need to think straight here. Hey, that's character development! <laughs> All Yosuke said that he saw her with Teddy. Then, was Nanako brought here by Teddy? If he's the leader of this tournament? Yosuke, be straight with me. Are you sure Nanako is with Teddy? Uh, how should I know? If I had to guess, I'd say she's probably still with him. Man, are you alright? Are you that worried about Nanako-chan? It's no wonder people look at you funny, thinking you have a sister complex. <laughs> the sense of rawness that I've been feeling this whole time, it's getting even stronger. <laughs> True, Yosuke may say some insensitive things, but mostly that's because he reads too much into a situation 
and acts out over it. He's not the type of guy to enjoy making hurtful remarks like this. Yosuke, are you alright? Huh? What are you talking about? I should be the one saying that to you. She's not even your real sister. All that big bro stuff really creeps me out. Hmm, it was a while ago that I saw her. It's probably too late to save her now. You know how things went last year, after all. Yosuke. <laughs> He's definitely not the Yosuke I know. Yeah, Yosuke's my friend. He wouldn't be so callous at that. At least, I thought so up until now. He was the one who had to face the pain of losing someone he cared about when the murders first started last year. I can't hate him for accidentally mentioning someone who was dead. But the way he's acting, he's doing this on purpose. I silently draw my sword and face Yosuke. Draw your weapon. You'll get your fight. What? Dude, what are you saying? You told me you let me win by default. To be honest, I've been thinking that this Yosuke before me was some kind of fake. I even wondered if something had happened to him. And Yosuke's shadow had appeared again in this world. But this wrongness that I kept sensing is nothing like that. This probably is a real Yosuke. And the strangeness I feel is because these words really are coming out of the mouth of someone I never thought would say them. If so, then... I don't know if you're being controlled or if there's something else going on here. Either way, you must understand the best way to resolve the situation. Violence! There's no way to tell what I'm saying is getting through to him at all. But if I want to figure out what's going on, I'll just have to fall for this trap once. Sorry. But I'm gonna go all out. No hard feelings. Huh? All that talk and you're gonna fight against your partner after all? Well, whatever. Let's hurry up. If you lose, then started. that's an L for me. You have to refund your copy? I think I've been I, I left this game on once when I fell asleep. So I don't think I could even refund this on Steam. <laughs> How long has the stream been live? 49 minutes? Finally. Gameplay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So I don't know all of Narukami's attacks. Because I don't play this character. Get off me! Get over here! Is there a round two? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> That's funny. You as a command grab? I do remember remember that. I forget what action it is. That's just it. That's funny. You're gonna continue with this, Teddy? About Nanako. <laughs> I don't want to spoil the surprise. If you want to find out, you'll have to get to me. And I can't say why, but I think you should hurry. Bro. The monitor shuts off. I still haven't learned anything about Nanako. But he did seem to have been expecting me to ask about her. I don't want to think about it, but Nanako may really be here. The moment the monitor turned off, the students began to leave the waves in the receding tide. No, they don't look like students anymore. There's something inhuman, just taking the shape of students. I was too focused on the fight to notice, but it seems our true forms were coming through. They look like silhouettes. Could they be... Shadows? Even so, I don't sense any hostility from them. Well, if they're not a threat and they're going away, there's no need to chase after them. Besides, there's something more important to do right now. Yosuke, are you alright? I walk towards Yos where Yosuke lies collapsed on the ground and give him my hand to help him up. Ow, couldn't you hold back a little? I seriously thought you were going to kill me. The same went for you. 
I wouldn't have stood a chance if I held back on you. Yosuke grimaces in pain as he stands, but he doesn't seem to have suffered any severe injuries. We are like level 99 after all, and that's good. I can risk going easy on him, so I was a little worried that I actually hurt him. But once you get a good look at each other, Yosuke's demeanor suddenly changes. Anyway, that aside, shut up about the nurses already. It's not like that's the only thing I ever think about. What's this about nurses? Huh? You were harping on it the whole time. How can you stand there and constantly bash my taste in women with a straight face? Is it such a crime to like nurses? Wait a second. I don't understand why he's suddenly angry, but he's not making any sense at all. I tell Yosuke to calm down and we go over what he thought had happened before the fight. We learn that our memories of, of each of us have been saying didn't match up at all. Pick Yosuke next after you do this side, you will love it. Yeah, I'll do Yosuke next, definitely. According to Yosuke, it seems that I've been, well, teasing him about his taste in women. Yosuke was so heated up over that I suppose we say that he almost went into graphic detail, but I stopped him before things went too far. I mean, really? It's best for both of us if we pretend this never happened. But thanks to our conversation after the battle, I've come to realize something. If we've been hearing each other saying neither of us have been meaning to say, then... Yosuke, let me ask you something. Is it true that Nanako is here in this world? She is? Yosuke's at a loss for words. He had no idea what I was talking about. It's just as I thought. Yosuke doesn't know anything about Nanako. If that's true, then what I heard Yosuke say before the fight was something that Yosuke couldn't possibly have said. This only makes me more convinced that I had the right idea. What I had heard wasn't what Yosuke had meant to say. I don't know how, but something else has made Yosuke say those words even if he didn't know what he was saying them. <laughs> that reminds me, Teddy on the screen had said that I need to get him to get to him if I wanted to find out the truth. Is this what is happens to the Izzy brain when he gets off from work? There's no choice but what do you going. mean? <laughs> Nanako is good friends with Teddy. I don't want to imagine it happening, but if he wanted to kidnap her, it's certainly possible he could have. I want to go home at once and check to make sure she's okay, but I have no idea where I am. Are we talking about the train? Oh yeah, screw the train, bro. <laughs> Even worse, Ted Shoot, there's no way out of here unless I find him on my own. Taking off? Yeah, well, be careful. Yeah, man, like... The train. I hate the train. Be careful. I'm worried about you. Do your best. I sense a lot of emotions behind those words. Yes. I know that I'm here and... Yes, I know that I'm here. I take... I take Yosuke's cheer for me to heart and leave the music room. Teddy, I really said that the only the winner could go on in this tournament. I don't know exactly what that means, but it's probably not a lie. Yosuke understands that as well. That's why he's trusted me to sort it all out, and lets me go without much talk. He's frustrated that he can't help me out. I could just be jumping to conclusions there. After all, Teddy did say that was a rule, but we don't have any proof either way. Hmm, I might as well uh, see what he meant by that. I stopped walking and turned back to Yosuke. Oh, uh, one last thing. About those nurses. Ah, quit it already! Are you out of your mind again? <laughs> Yosuke turns bright red and rushes towards me, flailing wildly in an attempt to stop me from finishing. And... There's a painful sound and noise as he runs into something invisible and slowly slides to the floor. What is this? Huh. So there's an invisible wall. Looks like the loser can't leave the room. It looks like there's some force that prevents the loser from leaving the area where the fight took place. It's like that every every time one of these battles happen here. The winner will get sorted out this way. That's annoying. I see how it works now. Thanks. If Teddy really has kidnapped Nanako, there's no time to lose. Don't use me as your guinea pig. Wait, that's it? Hey! Don't wear yourself out, alright? I turn away as Yosuke shouts at me. 
Not to worry, Yosuke. I give him a quick smile before leaving the arena. For real this time. At that moment, I feel a wave of distortion crash over me. This. I'm surprised that this is happening without warning, but it's not a threat. After all, I know this feeling all too well. We're getting teleported? Oh no, we're just getting sent to the- Oh, technically! Welcome to the Velvet Room. Yeah, can you give me, like, um... Izanagi no Picaro? Or Izanagi no Akami? <laughs> so we can end this quickly. <laughs> give me Yoshitsune, Trumpeter. Things have only just begun, and yet you already seem tired. The misfortune that has befallen you can be thought of as a sort of trial. A trial? So your persona does transform in the alt. Oh, okay. I want to know the details behind her words, but I know that she won't answer me even if I ask. The inhabitants of the Velvet Room never reveal everything. That's because they can only watch over the choices their guests make. Margaret's smile broadens that when she sees that I don't intend to ask her anything. Indeed. I am an observer on your journey. I would do nothing so thoughtless as to force you to make choices. You do not need such provocations. I already know that you shine brilliantly enough. The shine she speaks of. Could it be about my ability to use personas? Yes, that is part of your brilliance. Personas are masks of resolution, strengthened by controlling one's heart. By forming bonds. You understand this well, don't you? Yeah, that's how we all fought up till now. Yes, indeed. But one's heart is intangible. It cannot be seen and cannot be felt. When polished, it releases a strong light unlike anything else. But it can also be clouded by trivial things. Have you ever felt that way? That may be true. You may be more conscious of that fact than most, because you hold the power of the wild card. Margaret's voice fades away as she answers me. Yeah, I, I'm a wild card, so, uh, uh... From here on, you will be forced to re-examine the things you know as bonds. How will you face the changes to come? Wait, and what don't F up your choices, it'll lead you to other endings? Oh, shoot. Is, is there a bad ending, bro? When I open my eyes again, I'm in the school's hallway. I turn around and see the door to the music room close behind me. Was I only summoned to the Velvet Room in spirit? There's no way for me to figure out what just happened. But I think back on Margot and it told me. The changes, huh? Changes. Even though people of the Velvet Room avoid saying much, what little they do have to say is always has meaning. Well... It's true that Margaret has said some strange things while I've known her. But she's never said anything meaningless while on duty. I would assume that this would be the case now. I may have to keep her words to heart. My bonds will be having changes. If I just believe in the power of Persona, and the power of my friends, I should be fine. When you want to fight on the game, like in the fighter days? Uh, not sure yet. Um, I'm gonna be working a lot this week, and there's like, also this Kirby video I need to get done before the week is over, and then there's a new Kirby game coming out, while well, I also need to practice this game. So I'm not sure yet, but uh, if you're ever on, and I see you, when I got time, I'll hit you up. You're off today and tomorrow? I see you. Teddy appeared on the monitor in the music room. From the looks of things, he appeared to be behind what has happened. What was happening? I heard Risei's voice over the school's PA system before my fight with Yosuke. If this school works anything like a real one, I can make a good guess as to where Teddy and Risei are. The you principal's the office! Room. Or, yeah, I, I meant the announcement room, dude. Oh, well, that's not a principal's office. Usually. Usually the principal's office is like... Uh, where the PA is. So I'm right. Yeah. <laughs> I feel 
like I'm being led somewhere. I stop for a moment in the hallway out of the practice building and mutter to myself while I take a look around. Dude, I love the lighting in this image. Who is no? Where are they trying to lead me? That moment. Hey, you there. You're one of them participants and not that Grand Prix thing, right? Yeah, Amy Rose. <laughs> a voice I don't recognize at all breaks uh, breaks me from my reverie. Instantly jump back and draw my sword in surprise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's the big idea? You could poke someone's eye out swinging that thing around. I turn and see a girl that I've never seen before. Was she part of that crowd? No. She looks like a real person. She was caught by surprise when I suddenly pointed my weapon at her. Although she flinches, her words don't lose any of their intensity. Love her or die? How bold of her. That may seem like an odd thing to say, but it's what suddenly crossed my mind. But this girl doesn't seem to have any intention of attacking me. Yo, I fought a Labyrinth on Ranked the other day. I didn't know what was going on. Sorry. I got I bopped. Sorry, ain't gonna cut it. Yeah, Fortnite removed well, building for uh, eight more days. Pulling that stuff without student council approval. All right, the jig is up. I'm putting the kibosh on this tournament right now. Hey, wait, hold on a second. I'm not in this because I want to be. I'm trying to stop the tournament. I'm trying to act non threatening, but the girl continues to glare at me. Who in the world is this girl? Yeah, who is she anyway? She's wearing a Yasugami High uniform. She says something about the student council. But, I don't recognize her. You don't encounter people here in this world that often. If a person is here, and they're either a Persona user, Why or are you a... here, by the way? Wait, did you fall inside a TV? That's right. I might have put in a little differently, but if she can't enter a TV herself, the only possibility is that someone threw her in. That was what was happening in the murders from last year. All inside a TV. What kind of nonsense is that? She's not aware of it. But if she was a Persona user, I don't see why she'd hide that fact. If she was trying to keep that from me, then she wouldn't have come to talk to me like this. Then does that mean she's a victim after all? I carefully choose my words to avoid provoking the girl and introduce myself. I'm Yu Narukami. I was a second year at Yasugami High until last year. Huh? Last year? But that uniform... Oh no, this is... Uh, kind of my usual equipment when I'm in the TV world. Equipment? Uh, never mind. Uh, Deep voice you? <laughs> uh, around till last year. I ain't gonna blame you for not knowing. I'm the new student council president. Nice meeting you. The student council president? If I'm remembering correctly... The student council election should have been taking place just before the holidays. Yeah, sure, let's see it. Oh, it's the pizza one, right? I, I actually did see that one, if that's the one you're referring to. That reminds me, I didn't have any friends on the student council last year either. This girl may, may very well be the president. No reason not to believe her. Now it's your turn to spill. You said you ain't in the tournament because you want to be. Then what are you doing here? And what's this tournament about in the first place? I feel that I don't explain things very clearly to her, only provoke her further. But trying to tell her everything about what's going on here will only confuse her. I leave out the fact that this place is inside a television and tell her that the other things that are going on. First I tell her about Teddy, that a friend of mine is likely the only one who set this tournament up. Second, that I encountered some of my friends who were dragged into this as well. But they were acting strangely. And third, that my cousin Nanako, still in elementary school, may have been dragged into this mess. The girl calling herself the student council president seems skeptical while I talk, but eventually she sighs. So if I got this right, you didn't start this, but your friend did. Hmm. Well, you don't seem like you're lying. It seems that she somehow grasps the gist of what I was trying to say. I think you're out of politeness, but she laughs and that's why I'm thanking her. There's still one more difficult task left at hand. How do I make her understand that all this is within another world? 
one access by going through a TV screen. She still appears to be energetic, but doesn't change the fact that she's in danger. I have to get her out of this world, no matter what. Where'd that sound come from? Hey, that sounded like it came from the gym. I ought to tell you to go home, but I get that you're worried about your sis. Come on, let's go check it out. We both start running at the same time. I reach my full running speed when something occurs to me. I'm surprised to see this Miss President keeping pace right beside me. Just standing still in this world would be scrutinous for a normal person, but she doesn't even seem out of breath. She's quite impressive. I take a moment to quietly praise the girl running next to me. We burst into the gym where all the noise came from, but there's no one here. Instead, we see huge piles of stacked chairs. They're twisted and intertwined everywhere on the open floor of the gym, forming huge towers that reach almost the ceiling. What is this? Who we'll go to all this trouble? The girl stares up at the chairs, seemingly dumbfounded. Suddenly, the monitor in the gym flickers to life. And as I expected, Teddy appears again in that costume. He's not saying anything completely straight, but he's obviously hinted that he knows I'm worried about Nanako. I know that saving Nanako is important, but I can't leave Miss President here alone and abandon her to this world either. Still, I feel Teddy's words cause me to doubt myself. And Miss President raised her voice. Hey, you! You're the ringleader of this mess, aren't you? What's the idea? Raising a ruckus like this without running it by the student council. Pack it in and clean all this up already. She speaks as fast and clearly as she had when I first met her. After getting a clear look at her, I feel like I've come to realize where she gets her courage from. She truly wishes to protect her school. Her strong awareness of her duty is surpassing her fear. But Teddy on the monitor looks annoyed sneers at Miss President. It's incredibly detestable. I can't believe that Teddy can't even mark such a malicious expression. What's that tiny thing? I'm in the middle of an important conversation with Sensei. A yappy little mutt like you should be muzzled and sit in the corner. Sit, puppy. Sit. He has absolutely no intent of dealing with her seriously. Miss President turning bright red in humiliation from being brushed off like that. This is enough. I take a step forward to put myself between the monitor and Miss President. Just leave this to me. I'll take it from here. It's all right. There's nothing to worry about. Miss President's lips are trembling. She must be angry that there's nothing she can do to herself. I don't want that anger to be in vain, so I turn to face Teddy on the monitor. That was pretty harsh, Teddy. Hard to believe a womanizer like you would say such things. <laughs> What's so attractive about a shameless liar like her? Liar? You know something about her? The way he said this makes it sound as if there's some history between the two of them. But as usual, he doesn't bother to give any details in his answer. Come on, Sensei. Your opponent's getting tired of waiting for you. With the next challenger, come on down! Thank goodness you're safe. What's the matter? It's uh, nothing. Are you alright? Has anything odd happened to you? Odd? No, I, I don't think so. Yukiko seems alarmed to see me in such a defensive posture. 
feel my shoulders relax in relief as I shift my weight to stand normally. Seems that she hasn't been affected like Yosuke had. I didn't think I'd be been that tense though. Now that's a Yukiko I remember. She's as sharp as always, exactly when we need her. She's not being confused, and I can immediately ask for her help. I try to explain what I need from her. Nanako might be in here. I'm heading to the announcement room where Teddy is. I need you to protect this girl from me. She might be a victim of all this. I motion towards this president standing next to me. Yukiko looks at me in surprise. I don't blame her though. But what Yukiko said next was even more surprising. Why do I have to do that? It's not like I know her or anything. I'm not going to help her because I don't know her? Is that really what she's saying? I can understand that she might be cautious when meeting someone for the first time, but would Yukiko really think that way? It's got to be the same as with Yosuke. That seems a canny sense of wrongness is coming back to me when I hear Yukiko speak. Yukiko, not you too. Calm down and listen to me. Can you understand what I'm saying? Huh? What are you saying all of a sudden? I can hear you clearly. What did you mean by you too? When I try to question her, Yukiko's expression returns to normal. I can't tell anymore. She doesn't look like she's being controlled by someone. Am I overthinking this too much? At the very least, she doesn't seem enthusiastic about this P1 Grand Prix. This is probably a trick the enemy is playing on us. They're trying to get us to fight each other. I'll say it one more time, Yukiko. I'd like you to protect this girl for me. Sorry, but um, I don't know how to put this. It just feels like you're being really selfish. You always help people who have nothing to do with you, and I admire that. But where does that leave us? It's always your friends who get put in danger because of your self-centeredness. I'm used to hearing her voice, but her words are scathing. I'm convinced now. There's no obvious change in her attitude like there had been with Yosuke. But something must be warping Yukiko's words, too. Her words may seem like a sound argument, but she means something else. I don't care if someone who isn't related to me gets hurt. That's definitely not something Yukiko would say. The real Yukiko would never say something that disrespects the value of a life that way. Don't be deluded. Whatever happened to Yosuke is happening to Yukiko too. I don't understand the details, but Yukiko hasn't had a complete change of heart. Yukiko. What the? Yuka? When I draw my sword, Miss President quickly tries to stop me. But I can't answer her right now. If a battle will clear up this pointless misunderstanding between us, then the time to fight is now. Ooh, now that's our senpai! You'll show no mercy, not even to a girl if it's for your own goals! You're a real bastard with a sister complex. Keep it up and bring them all down! I ignore the taunts being delivered in Risei's voice. Even if those words aren't getting through to each other, and we have to fight without understanding what's going on, we'll come to an understanding later. I have to believe. Both myself and my friends. I hold my sword to the side and protect Miss President, who is standing behind me. Sorry, but you need to stay back. Whatever you see here, try to stay calm. Promise me you won't run away. What happens next will probably surprise her greatly, but I doubt Miss President will run away. She's already shown me how strong her determination is. I glance at her over my shoulder. Although she looks worried, she still gives me a slight nod of agreement. Now, time to do this. Persona! I concentrate all my senses on some of my strength of heart. My persona is Nagi. If I allow myself to go easy on Yukiko, she will surely defeat me. Yukiko smiles faintly and takes her battle stance. She resisted the idea of protecting Miss President, but she seems to have no qualms whatsoever about fighting me. 
There's definitely something else controlling her. Come, Konohana Sakuya. Yukiko's black hair forms graceful arcs in the air as her persona, Konohana Sakuya, raises, rises behind her. That's right, the usual Yukiko should have a beautiful heart like this. Wait for me. I will save you! You got good range, Narukami. Specials. My specials are pretty, ter pretty terrible. Oh no! Can't lose. Can't lose. Can't lose. I'm gonna lose. Never mind. <laughs> A lot of bug marks. You have to do two quarter circles forward or back, and then use Persona button or light or heavy. I was trying to do, like, I, I still struggle with doing double quarter circle. I can do a single one, but I feel like I just, the time ends off. I don't care, I don't care to hear any more of Teddy's jests. I still have some reservations while fighting against my friends, but I now know there's no other way to save them. I'm resolved to do what must be done. Yeah, I just need no more practice, yeah. Also, there's no knowing if Teddy or Risa have been affected, just like Yosuke or Yukiko had. If they are, then there's no use in trying to talk to them through the monitor like this. That's the conclusion I've come to. But Miss President seems to have other ideas. How much further are you gonna push this? Why are you doing it anyway? These guys are friends! What's so much fun about making friends fight each other? Miss President vents her frustrations at Teddy's image on the monitor. But I was a bit surprised at how she worded it. She seems more upset that he was making friends making friends fight each other. Not why he dragged the entire school into this mess. We've only just met, but she clearly sympathizes with us and understands the pain we're going through. I'm embarrassed but proud at the same time. A girl with such compassion would be a great student council president. It's no wonder she was elected to represent the student body of Yasugami High. It's alright. Thanks, though. It's not alright! This is... She's still worked up and she lashes out on me. Perhaps her heart is a little too honest. But her anger sets my mind at ease. She's right. What General Teddy is doing right now cannot be forgiven. I glare at the monitor. Sorry, but you're not getting your wish. What? Did you think this would be all it took to break us apart? That it would make us hate each other? Sorry to say, but that's a huge mistake on your part. I believe in my friends. They'll never get taken in like that. <laughs> you're so stupid. What kind of sensei are you? I'm warning you now. If you really are Teddy, then we'll get you back to normal no matter what it takes. Even if it costs us our lives. But if you're an imposter, Hiding behind Imposter! Teddy's, I will make you pay for toying with us. <laughs> Teddy scoffs and turns around. The monitor suddenly switches off. 
suddenly turn it on us without any sign of remorse. That's not like Teddy at all. No, he's most likely not the real Teddy. Did you hear that raw emotion? <laughs> Seeing the anger in his face only strikes my suspicions. Someone must be taking Teddy's form to make it look like he's trying. Uh, he's what committed. Uh, um, uh, that girl's come around. I immediately rushed to Yukiko's side. You alright? Yukiko, are you alright? I'm sorry I couldn't go easy on you. No, it's okay. You aren't your usual self. But I could tell by your eyes that there was something going on. I'm sorry too. Did I hurt you? Kinda, yeah. I sure wouldn't want to get into it with you again. I try to pass it off as a joke. I mean, you all look at each other and laugh. Things are going the same way as they had with Yosuke. It's becoming clear now. Hey, did I say things that offended you earlier? Um, yes. You did. Yukiko hesitates as if remembering it is a difficult experience. When the world of my illusion say to her, I bet it was something horrible. Whoever's doing this is certainly finding the most annoying way of getting us to fight. But what I supposedly said to her doesn't matter. Yukiko is still hesitant to bring it up, so I tell her not to worry about it. I don't need to know what I said. I just wanted to see if my guess was right. It looks like our enemy has the power to confuse our senses. My first opponent was Yosuke, and he told me a similar story after we fought. Huh? You said something bad to Yosuke-kun too? What did you tell him? You sure you want to know? <laughs> if I'm the only one admitting to what happened, that's not fair, is it? <laughs> <laughs> My curiosity's in line with the Yukiko, I know. I evade the issue of a smile and call out to Miss President. What kind of people are you? Hmm? Oh, right. We used our personas. Yeah, we should at least explain to her what's going on. She did everything that had happened. This had been a good opportunity to tell her everything. I introduced Miss President and Yukiko to each other and fill in the parts I had left out in my previous explanation. I tell her about the personas. I tell her that we're actually in a world inside the television. And I tell her how the scenery here changes according to the hearts of the people who enter it. She looks doubtful while I'm talking, but considering that she's seen our personas only moments ago, she doesn't immediately deny it. Still, it seems that she can't accept it all, either. Still, see, uh, she crosses her arms as if, uh, ah! On the other hand, it seems that Yukiko didn't know that Yasukami High had a new student council president, either. Yukiko apologizes for not having paid attention to the elections in April. And that's it in a nutshell. So... That's what you meant by falling into a TV. Yeah, which makes me believe this school could be a part of your mind that's materialized. This school came from me? That's a lot to swallow. I'm not surprised. Why is it different this time around, though? Usually the victim's shadow appears first. That's right. I had doubts about that, too. There's a reason why it's dangerous for people who can't use their personas to enter this world. Besides the obvious reasons, such as not being able to escape and being unable to protect themselves from shadows, a person's shadow separates from them. The shadows that split off are strongly attached to the original people they came from, and will try to harm them in order to become the independent identities. I haven't given it much thought since Miss President seems so energetic, but it's still possible that this happened to her as well. I put this together with a conversation I had with Teddy a moment ago. Come to the conclusion. The Teddy who's hosting this tournament. What if he's actually this girl's shadow? Huh? I noticed he got agitated when I called him an imposter. A fake Teddy would mean he's someone else using Teddy's form. I see. If this place reflects Miss President's heart, her shadow must be here. And right now, the strongest candidate is. That's right. We both saw an illusion. At the very least, the enemy has the power to delude our senses and make us see and hear things that aren't there. On top of that, it can alter what others hear us and see us do. If I can do that, then I can easily see that our enemy can use that power to change its appearance. 
That means I could be impersonating Teddy and leading this tournament. That still leaves a question as to why it would take on the appearance of someone it doesn't know. I've seen shadows in the past that took on bizarre appearances, but this is the first time I've seen one impersonate an existing person. Does this shadow have some kind of objective? When I come to my senses, I see that Miss President has turned pale and is staring down the ground. All this talk of shadows, and another world doesn't seem to be reaching her. But she seems troubled at the thought that she might be causing all this trouble. I'm about to tell her that the actions of her shadow aren't her fault. But Miss President rises to her feet. I'm gonna check out the announcement room. Hmm? That General Teddy's behind the whole shebang, right? And if he came from me, then I gotta own up to the responsibility. A student body president, I can't let this go. W uh, w wait, you're being reckless. We'll take care of the shadow. You need to- What? Get out of this TV world? And how am I supposed to do that? Go on. Show me the door. Well. Her eyes are filled with fires of determination. Just as like they had been when I first met her. Her sense of responsibility and her awareness of her duties say that she'll never back down. Your little cousin's in the announcement room. And you're gonna go save her, right? I might not be as strong as the two of you. But I'm no slouch in a fight. Wouldn't it be better if we went together? No. Don't you understand? This world is... I know it's dangerous. But there's gotta be something only I can do to help. Hell, that aside, I can't leave after causing so much trouble. Making friends fight each other. I'm going on ahead. You don't want to waste time arguing, yeah? This president declares this in a voice that brooks no argument and takes off a run and... Yikes, wasn't expecting her to behave rashly like this. I remember how fast she can run. If I'm going to go after her, I need to go at once or I'll lose her. Please, you have to go after her. Yukiko seems, uh, sees me hesitate and knows exactly what to say. She's right. There's so much we don't understand, but there's no way the investigation team can let a victim run off to die. Yukiko ignores the fact that I'd be leaving her here all alone. Tells me to follow a girl she's only just met. This is the exact opposite of her behavior she'd been displaying before the fight. Now this is the Yukiko Amagi I know. I'm ashamed that I even had slightly let myself be confused by the way I had heard her speak before. I answer her. I'll come back for you no matter what. Mm -hmm. I believe in you. Yukiko nods to me and I turn and begin running as fast as I can. I have to rely on the faint echoes of footsteps ahead to pursue Miss President through the school. I can't use my memories of the school in order to navigate, because the invisible walls are everywhere, but the announcement room is upstairs. That obviously limits the paths that she can take. I will catch up with her no matter what. I've been running after Miss President for a while, but I still can't catch sight of her. She's so fast, it's almost supernatural. I can even begin to think her path may not be hindered by the invisible walls. Wait a second. Now that I think about it, she's not a participant in the P1 Grand Prix. She didn't appear in the introduction video, and even though she'd been there when I faced off with Yukiko, she wasn't affected by the rules. Should be able to walk through these walls? This might be her world. If so, then catching up to her will be quite difficult. Just as I'm thinking this, suddenly a blue door appears in my path. I've seen this before. This is the entrance to the Velvet Room. I don't have time to deal with this, or so I think. But when I consider the timing of its appearance, I can't help but feel that there must be a reason for it. I make up my mind and reach for the door. As I walk through the door, I feel a slight sense of lightheadedness, and I close my eyes reflectively. When I open my eyes, I'm seated in my usual position, and Margaret is smiling quietly at me, as if nothing is different. 
When she sees that I've noticed her, she speaks as if uh, aware of my impatience. <laughs> you seem flustered, but time has no meaning here. Margaret politely points us out, knowing that I'm in a hurry. Time is meaningless, huh? Thought I had figured out a few things about this room, but it seems that there's still more for me to learn about it. If time doesn't pass while I'm in this room, then I should concentrate on what she's about to tell me. Once again, as if reading my thoughts, Margaret smiles. It seems you've emerged victorious and have come away with a piece of the truth. Though you are in a garden of deceit, you have the vision to go forward. Very impressive. Is that student council president's shadow really the cause of all this then? Who can say? All I know is that you are getting ever closer to the truth. There is one thing I can tell you. Margaret's golden eyes are fixed if on mine. If that girl's shadow is the cause of this misfortune, she will face her trial. But it's separate from your fate. You have your own trial to overcome. Keep that to heart. My own trial? I don't mean to, but I repeat what Margaret had just said. My Everyone own trial. Everyone sees various things in you that draw them to you. Salvation. Hope. I myself find fascination in watching over you. Fate may not be the author of your trials, but you are destined to be tested. <laughs> Margaret smiles mischievously and nods towards me. Now there's slight feeling of lightheadedness passes and I return to the otherworldly school. The blue door is nowhere to be found, as if it had never been there to begin with. I look up. I still don't understand what my own trial is supposed to be. But for some reason, my mind has cleared up a bit. Uh, we're gonna leave scene two open. In any case, I need to keep chasing after Miss President. And now, I immediately see a recognizable feature. Her long ponytail. Ponytails be based! Ta -da 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 -da! Yo, red guy, thank life. you for the follow, dude. Appreciate it. Miss President turns around in response to my voice. She's smiling. I wasn't expecting that at all. Color me impressed that you managed to catch up to me so quick. Yo, yo! This calmness. Has she expected that I would follow her? I'm beginning to feel like she's toying with me. How long are you going for? Uh, I think this this um, story mode's like three hours ish, right? So I can probably finish it today. Promise me that you won't. So leave once my we side. finish it, I'm I'm done do for today. Rash. If you can't agree to those terms, I'm trying to play some Monster Hunter after. Custody. This is a matter of life and death. Yep, P4A story. Sure thing. Then let's get to that announcement room together. I thought that I'd be able to keep her in check by saying that her life was in danger. But she didn't seem to take any notice. She just shrugged and accepted my proposal. <sighs> she's quite hard to deal with. I'm not sure if she knows how I'm feeling, but she speaks up. Hey, mind if I ask you something? What is yeah, it? that game's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it a lot. There's a moment of silence. Just I'm about to ask her to go on. This president continues. It's tough. Being forced to fight your friends, huh? Yeah, we'll be doing uh, each character. Oh, sorry. I know, like, it's you gonna be very answer. repetitive, but I'm, I'm, I'm down for it. She must be still be thinking about my fight with Yukiko. True, I'm slightly hesitant to talk about any of this, but it's a question that must be answered. That's how it feels to me. No, you're right. If I could avoid it, I would. But I believe in my friends. You mean your friends won't hate you after the fight, or? You think they'll understand that you don't really want to fight? I don't know. Both, maybe. I mean, there's no way we'd fight each other without some kind of reason. Uh... Will she, will she believe that answer? I study Miss President's face. But when she opens her mouth, she has an unexpected gloomy look in her eyes. What if... you had to kill each other? What? <laughs> hey, yo! Kill each other! I truly hadn't anticipated that question. I'm caught off guard by how I haven't even considered it. It's true, there's no guarantee that this General Teddy will suddenly decide to make us fight to the death on a whim. Huh. So 
sorry. That was probably over the line. I don't know why I said that. I wouldn't let it happen. Even if I was forced into such a situation, I would never follow that order. That's all I can say right now. But after hearing my answer, Miss President cast her eyes down again. After seeing that behavior, I... How do I put this? Felt a sense of incongruity. I've never seen that word before in my life. Why could that be? Something doesn't feel like her. Can Miss President be carrying some unimaginable burden as yet to confide in us? Is it so heavy that she would ask that question of me? Speaking of which, if General Teddy does turn out to be her shadow, what does that mean about whatever repressed thoughts she truly has? Suddenly, it seems that her courageousness and cheerful demeanor are a mirror image of that, and a slight sense of fear chills my spine. My thoughts race through my mind while we had walked down the hallway. What are you doing? Ugh, I thought I broke my nose for a moment. It's that invisible wall again. Even though I should have been expecting them, I'd relax my guard and walked right into what. I hold my nose and wave around Miss President, who looks concerned. <sighs> There's an invisible wall. I don't think I can go through here. An invisible wall? Oh, that must have been why you broke out of the Mime Act every now and then. Well, if I can pass through, it must only be blocking the tournament fighters. This world sure is out there. Miss President walks right through the place I bumped into. So, that must be the case. As I imagine, Miss President is unaffected by these walls. Is it because she's not one of them fighters in the Grand Prix? Of course, the General Teddy really is her shadow. Maybe the normal rules don't apply to her. The entrance of the school building is ahead of us. But, perhaps worst of all, is that the wall that I just walked into is blocking me from reaching there. I'll just have to find some other way. No, there are walls there too. And the same can be said for the direction towards the entrance. A thought crosses my mind as I check back the way we had come. It's as I, it's, it's as I thought. Another invisible wall has formed where I just passed, and I can't go back. With walls in every direction, there's nowhere I can go. I'm trapped. If I can't go anywhere, this could only mean one thing. Be careful. This probably means... The moment I call out to Miss President, General Teddy appears on the monitor in the entryway. Who are you fighting this time? It means my third round in the P1 Grand Prix is about to begin. <laughs> is your snout okay, Sensei? Jeez, you're such a klutz. You're still using that form? It's getting old. Why don't you just show your true self? Boy, you got peevish. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. You might play the whole thing today and tomorrow. Good luck. I was intentionally trying to rile him up, but he wasn't falling for it. It's like I'm not going to get him to reveal anything that way. You already know what okay. happens when I want to stream it. Got so it. So who's my next opponent? Ooh, now you're getting into the spirit of things. Let's What's up, Bandy? You're starting to enjoy beating up your friends. <laughs> okay, with the next challenger, come on down. The general doesn't pick up on my intention and loudly yells out what appears to be his pre-battle catchphrase. Smoke pours out. And who should appear from the smoke? But the person I was expecting to see. <gasps> Four of us enter the TV together. I've already fought against Yosuke and Yukiko. Then... We're fighting the character that's all over ranked mode! The last of us, after all. <laughs> yeah. I had a feeling you'd be next, too. She laughs along with me. For the moment, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with her. Words and actions. But I can't let my guard down around her. After all, I felt the same way when I encountered Yukiko, too. But, as they say, the third time's a charm. I have to see if Chie's in her right mind. 
I decide that the best way to do that is to be calm and start a conversation with her. Chie, you know what they're doing, right? Before I can begin to explain, Chie cuts me off. Yeah, I know. The stuff we say gets twisted around so we end up fighting each other, right? Don't worry. You're the son of a bitch who left us as soon as the last case ended, but you're still our good friend. Why? Have it easy. You're just fighting your friends. I have to keep killing over and over, all because of you humans. Whoa! Always love Haruhi base. Let's go. What the fuck? <laughs> the game of Chie. What's going on? So blatant her words don't offend me at all. Moreover, it's not just out of character, but Chie would never say anything like that. She really wouldn't. And you humans? That's as good as confessing that you're not human. Oh, right. Carnivore, was it? <laughs> this president is watching us from nearby. She looks more dumbfounded than worried. Still. What Chie said at the end caught my attention. I had to keep killing over and over. Uh oh. Stuff about killing, huh? Killing. Miss President was talking about it earlier, too. This must be... It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. I'll give you a taste of the pain they put me through! She's not even trying to sound like Chie anymore. Full mask off. Can't even begin to understand what she's talking about. But if a shadow's intentionally making people say these things, what does this mean about Miss President? Killing each other? All because of humans? What kind of secret past could a new student council president of Yasugami High be harboring? I'm actually curious myself. No, now's not the time for this. I'll have to look into this after we've cleared up all the confusion between us. Let's do this, Chen. I ignore her words and draw my sword. Immediately, Risei's words echoes through the area, as if she was waiting for this. may have a slight advantage slight advantage is she higher in the tier list all talk and no skill managed to eke out a win this time all talk no skill literally in my original game i barely say words there's just no way Dude, I love this, like, this splash screen. Dun, 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 dun. All right, gamers, they'll never see it coming. The overhead. Ah! Okay. What the fuck, bro? That's a slide in. Stay in the court. I see the burst. Keep forgetting I could do that. Negative. Let me try that all out attack again. All right, she had us in the first half. <laughs> she had us in the first half. Oh, man. All right, that was fun. Uh, what, 60 seconds of gameplay? Back to visual novel. <laughs> Wait till you see my Chie. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> I've won. I lower my sword and begin slowly slowing my breath. I don't believe I've injured Chie too badly, even though I sliced her up with my sword. Considering this is my third time having to do this, I feel like I'm getting pretty good at not having to seriously wound people in a fight. Wipe that smug look off your face. This isn't fun at all. General Teddy has seen that the fight's ended without any injuries, and spits his words through the monitor. The image on the monitor then disappears without anything further. Let him say whatever he wants. 
I fought all the friends I came into the TV with. None of them are hurt. Except for their pride. All that's left is to head to the announcement room. Make sure Nanako is safe. And then we'll be able to go home. The character says one line of dialogue back to mind. Not pretty much. <laughs> I walk over to Chie and help her off the ground. She's come back to her senses. Man, you were no That's crazy. Imagine saying that. I think so. Man, you're strong. I'm kind of shocked at how much of a difference there is between us. Well, I am the wild card of the fool arcana. Look who's talking. Never been kicked around so badly in my life. That is true. We've never got kicked around so badly in our life. Reload the save. He is the main character. So the and say that to her. <laughs> what a relief. She has no challenge at all? Oh, not really, bro. <laughs> she needs to relieve that she sits down on the floor once more. I can't help but smile at that reaction. She really does care about her friends. Yeah, these are the people I believe in. Seeing us exchanging smiles got, like nothing was wrong. Miss President sounds perplexed when she speaks up. You guys really are tight, aren't you? Makes me jealous. We are well, ranked 10 we after all. We didn't spend a whole lot of time together last year because of that case. Sure, I was surprised to hear such weird stuff coming from him, but I know he'd never say any of that to me. Wait a sec. Who are you? Oh, I forgot about that. I quickly introduce Miss President and tell Chie that she may be a victim of this case. But Chie looks again at Miss President suspiciously. Huh? The student council president? You mean ours? That doesn't seem right. I remember the new president being a guy. What are you saying? Hey, I'm yo! Student council president. Who else would I be? Mm, I'm pretty sure, though. Maybe if you told me your name, I'd remember. My name... This president stops moving. What's going on? She can't tell us her name? That's not, the str that's not a strange question, is it? But for some reason, Miss President seems unable to answer. I sense some kind of incoherent melancholy from her. Chie and I share a tense glance. I... My name's... What's wrong? My... My Maurice. No! I don't want to fight anymore! Why do we have to kill one another? Kill one another? I grasp when I hear the words fall from her mouth. I don't know what's crossing her mind right now, but she's definitely not acting normally. I glance at Chie, then try to approach Miss President in the hopes of calming her down. Ah! Hey, yo! Without warning, Miss President begins flailing her arms as if trying to ward off demons that only she can see. Oh, she's a Roy mate! Chie reaches out and touches her in concern. Miss President's arm catches Chie and easily knocks her aside. Chie! What power? I barely manage to catch Chie before she slams into a concrete wall. Still, this suddenly this sudden breakout. What in the world's happening to Miss President? Miss President, get down! Once I've helped Chie back to her feet, we carefully approach her from both sides. This'll be a little rough, but it can't be helped. We can't ask her anything while she's like this. We gotta all out attack her. But at that moment. What? No way. Before I know it, Miss President is flying through the air. What? She was jumping. For a moment, I can't comprehend what I'm seeing. I can't comprehend it either because of a bunch of still images. This is no ordinary leap. She was at a standstill. But now her entire body is suddenly up higher than my head. Her jumping ability is unbelievable. She and I look in astonishment as Miss President kicks off the ceiling to change direction and lands at a full run. Wow. Who is that girl? Did I say something to offend her? She did mention something about her memories. Come to think of it, her memories did seem a little muddled. Maybe she was on the verge of getting them back. What kind of memory would make her go nuts and run away like that? I can't answer Chie at all. What if you had to kill each other? I hear Miss President's sad voice in my head. Chie apparently wasn't expecting me to answer her, and she continues. I'll wait here. Make sure you rescue her, okay? 
Her voice is strong and confident. To drive the point home, she pokes my chest with her finger, as if ordering me. Even though she might be in danger herself, she's still worrying about others. All my friends are like that. That makes me really happy right now. I asked Chia if she'll be alright on her own. She fires back, let me worry about that. I nod to her and begin running after Miss President once more. I will save her, no matter what. <laughs> Chia ratioed her. <laughs> Even though I was running as fast as I could, the invisible walls keep preventing me from making much headway. I attempted to strike at the walls with my persona, but nothing happened. So many invisible walls, one after another. Miss President can pass through them. I don't know if I can keep up the pursuit. The announcement room is still my destination. There's no way to know if there's where Miss President's headed, as well. But there's a shadow waiting for me there. I'll need to get there anyway. Mind vibes? <laughs> Teddy and Risa should be in the announcement room. If Nanako is being held captive, that's where it should be as well. I have to keep running, but yet another wall blocks the hallway. At first, I think that this is a dead end. I realize I can cut through a classroom and come out on the other side, the wall. It's forcing me to enter the room, rather than let me go straight. This probably means... I brace myself and put my hand on the door. But we defeated Chie, Yosuke, and Yukiko! Who else could be here? The moment I step inside, a familiar voice echoes in my mind. Hi. Senpai! Can you hear me? Please answer me! That voice... Is that you, Rise? The real one? Her voice isn't coming from the PA system. I'm actually hearing it in my head. This has to be the work of Rise's persona. Thank goodness. I've been all alone since that weird fake Teddy captured me. And then you were all fighting each other. Kind of reminds me of another game. <laughs> I could hear the relief in her voice. She sounds so different from the insensitive and rude voice that had been coming from the PA system. Yeah, that's kind of like fighting game story modes. That's kind of how they go. Can you honestly. Okay where I am? I'm sorry, I don't think there's time. I'm stuck in the announcement room. Please, Senpai, you have to hurry. If you don't, he'll... Hey! What's wrong, Rise? Get your hands off my woman! There's no answer. Communication has been cut off. Has something happened in the announcement room? My heart begins racing. The enemy made us fight each other as participants in this tournament, but they had captured Rise as well. It's clear to me that they must be worried about her using her persona's powers to tell us the truth. But that's not important right now. They silenced her, bro! She was just captured to prevent her from contacting us. Then the enemy must think of Rise as being less valuable than those who had to fight. She sounded okay, but who knows what might have happened to her now. I have to hurry. Pardon me for interrupting while you are lost in thought. <laughs> A hand brushes my shoulder. In surprise, I jump away and draw my sword. I can't believe that I let myself get so lost in thought. All alone. I didn't notice someone until they touched me. This is the second time I've let myself get so distracted. Ah, oh, I'm distracted. I must tell the audience I got distracted for the second time. Gotten so used to having my friends with me while we investigated last year, I can't pay attention to the entire world on my own. I need to brace myself. I look up and see another unfamiliar face. A girl with blonde hair and striking blue eyes. I feel like I partnered with her in two spin-off games I have no memory of. Her face and voice seem human-like, but the rest of her... There's metal everywhere! All over her body! For a moment, I wonder if this is just an elaborate costume. But I can see the interior framework of her body where her joints connect. I didn't mean to startle you. You're... um... It's nice to meet you. My name is Igis. And no, I am not human. You are the one from the introduction video, listed as... The Sister Complex Kingpin of Steel, Narukami-san, correct? The question catches me off guard. I wasn't expecting a complete stranger to call me that. And did she say she wasn't human? 
It's, well, when Yosuke called me by that stupid title, I knew it was a joke. When a stranger says it, it sounds like they truly believe it. Ha. Huh. This is a pain. Uh, Nanako is important to me, but calling it a complex is stretching things. No, wait a second. I was trying to play it off, but I ended up blurting out Nanako's name anyway. Calm down. I need to take this conversation away from this subject. I clear my throat and try to start over. Aigasan, was it? Why are you here? Our primary objective is the destruction of shadows, but we have come to this world on a different mission. The destruction of shadows? She fights shadows, but how can she do that if... And does that mean... Yes, I have a persona as well. Though my body is a machine, personas are the strength of the heart after all. Just as I thought. I'm surprised to find another Persona user outside my group of friends, and a robot on top of that. I can't come to gripes of all of this. From the way we we're talking, she seems just like a normal person, only in an interesting suit. True, I've seen stories on the news about robots looking uncannily like real humans, but this isn't something like this far beyond those. Still, I can't help but believe the evidence of my own eyes. I mean, I've been hopping in and out of TV for the past year. Who might have say what's strange or not? That's true! Perhaps technology behind her creation has supernatural roots of its own. I find myself growing more and more interested in how she came to be here. But I have to put that aside for now. There's something I need to find out from her first. This P1 Grand Prix is so similar to the events of last year. But to think that would involve someone like her. I don't have a clear picture of everything that's happening. That's for sure. I calm myself, then ask her what I feel would tell me what, she, what she's doing in this world. And what is this mission of yours? She opens her mouth to respond, but just then... At least we're having a normal conversation, right? <laughs> the monitor inside the classroom turns on. It's at that moment that I suddenly remember. It's likely that I'm going to have to fight here. I'd forgotten about sensing that when I entered the room. Aha! So that's where you got to, Sensei. I've been looking all over for you. Ooh, who's the honey? Were you in the middle of trying to score with her? As if you didn't know, you're the one who lured us both here. Oh my, did you figure it out? I didn't have a choice after those guys decided on their own to horn in on the fun. Decided on their own? The P3 cast was like Crash's party? <laughs> the general on the monitor gives me a twisted smile. Could Aigasan's mission be something that would cause him trouble? I can't figure out what his motives are, but he's using us to crush each other. In other words, she's the next challenger that's been set against me. Aigasan seems to understand this as well. And is staring at the monitor with a quiet um, animosity. Sorry about this. Do you know the rule of this tournament? Only the victor of each match may move on. Yes? I have nothing against you, but I'm in a hurry for my own reasons. Neither of us, in other words, can back down. Then there should be no hard feelings. I guess son is refreshingly straightforward about this. She immediately takes a fighting stance. A bitter thought comes to me. It's tough being forced to fight my friends, but having to hurt someone that I don't even know is just as bad. Another thought comes onto heels on that one. I don't know this girl. Perhaps her appearance here means that there are urgent problems that an ordinary student like me can't fathom. What gives me the right to stop her on her mission? Shouldn't I know what's at stake before I take that from her? Thankfully, it seems that she hasn't gone mad like my other friends. Perhaps the enemy doesn't care about clouding the minds of people who don't know each other. If we're still capable of understanding each other, then we should talk this over before we can do anything. That will not do. We will speak more of this after one of us wins. Aigasan says this so quickly as if she's reading my mind. For a moment, I'm struck by how could she have known... What I was thinking, but... 
I realize that she's right. What good would it do for us to talk things over? True, the loser cannot leave this room. But until we have a battle, neither one of us is going anywhere. It doesn't really matter if we can come to an understanding or not. Until we have our fight, none of our goals are going to be accomplished. If that's the case, then it's better if we don't hear about each other's problems before we fight. That could be why Aigasan hasn't told me anything. This must be her version of kindness. I silently ready my sword. Even though we clearly heard it. Aigasan appears to smile slightly when I do. Huh, she smiles slightly, I wonder why. <laughs> Anyways, right, I'm not going to give up what I'm fighting for either. I need Nanako and my friends to be safe. Not that we make sure that Miss President is okay. I will use everything I can to protect them. To thank her for her consideration, I make it a point to announce that I'm ready to start the fight. And here goes. There's no need to hold back. Indeed. Let us do battle. A canonical battle between wild cards. I've been waiting for this. This game proves that Nanako is on his brain 90% of the time. Well, she is in mortal danger if she is in here. <laughs> you remember, like, in Persona 4, we spent, like, what, a month and a half of her in a hospital? No, even more. <laughs> No! Oh. Heartful cry. That's a good son. <laughs> you messed up? I know I messed up. I'm too used to Margaret's all out of deck. <laughs> I don't play this character, bro. Now that's the sensei I know. That hunk of junk was no match for you. Do you just call Igus a hunk of junk? Machine with the power of Persona. She was made to fight shadows. But I had no idea what she was capable of. I feel like my mind's been drained even more than my body. It angers me to see that the general is watching over us with an expression of joy, as if we were some performance for his amusement. I look up and glare at the monitor. I don't know why you're making us fight, but it's pointless. We aren't fighting because we hate each other. The reason we can't fight is because we respect and trust each other. A low growl. That's the only sound I hear. The real Teddy's never made such a hateful sound. It's actually rather scary. Stupid! You're such a dumbass! What's with you? He's gone full mask off! The image on the monitor distorts a lot of that outburst. The general's having trouble rem remembering to act as someone else, and his face bulges and ripples disturbingly as his hate pours through the screen. Any pretense at copying the adorable stupidity of the real Teddy is gone now. I notice that the voice spitting out these hateful words is not Teddy's either. Respect? Trust? So what if you don't hate each other? You're not like me! I was forced to fight against my will! I destroyed them with my own hands! You should all have to go through the hell I suffered! See how it feels to destroy everyone you call a friend! If I knew this was gonna happen, I would have made the rules so you had to kill your opponent to move on! The general on the monitor to continues to rage. What are you talking about? Why did you set this tournament up? 
The moment I say that, I feel that all the dots have been connected. When Miss President had asked us out of the blue if we were going to be forced to kill each other. The ominous muttering of killing one another. Were these both some, uh, something that had come directly from her past? Maybe she had been forced to fight against people if she didn't want to fight. She'd been forced to destroy something that was precious to her? There's no way to know for sure, but it's possible. Considering this, this kind of explains why her shadow would have created a tournament like this. Yeah, that's definitely shadow, uh, Miss President. <laughs> that is, she wanted us to feel what she went through. I might not be entirely correct, but I feel like I'm close to the truth. Did I just ask General Teddy about my suspicions? But as I'm, cons my, as I'm considering raising my voice. Pardon my eccentric entrance. What? Hey! I know a voice. Something comes crashing through the ceiling! What in the world? I rush over the Aigasan to protect her from the fallen debris. Screw burning the dread! You burnt the ceiling! What about the lights? What the heck? A young woman emerges. A young woman emerges from the cloud of dust. While not as strange as I guess, she seems a little uncommon as well. The, the roof room has doors. That's what I'm saying. Why she come through the ceiling, bro? I was about to get the heart of the matter with General Teddy, but the monitor in this room has been destroyed, along the ceiling. Though she seems oblivious to my confusion, the girl cocks her head and apologizes again. Oh, please excuse me. I didn't have the faintest idea that someone would be here. Faintest? Fain? Fiend? Something along those lines at any rate. What the hell is she talking about? Who in the world is this person? Hmm, wait a second. That blue suit she's wearing. It looks familiar. And with that silver hair and golden eyes. Could it be? Are you from the Velvet Room? My, is this what's known as being hit on? A huh? A where one human approaches another based solely on appearance and bets on the inner self being equally attractive. What? No, I'm not hitting on you. You just remind me of someone I know. Okay, she was like half right. Like, we just assumed she's from the Velvet Room because of her appearance, but hit it on her. That was going too far. I know we're Chad Arakabi, but we're not rank nine yet. Calm down. Do you happen to know anyone by the name of Margaret? Margaret? When she repeats the name, her face seems surprisingly youthful. I'd be taken aback by her bizarre speech and actions, but... Can this girl be younger than me? Her profile simultaneously evokes the images of a pondering philosopher and an innocent girl. I can't figure out how exactly to speak to her. Should I be more polite? I guess that doesn't matter too much. Anyway, worrying about the n niceties isn't the most important thing right now. Oh, actually, we should introduce ourselves first. I'm Yu Narukami. Ah, that had slipped my mind also. My name is Elizabeth, dear me. To hear that name brought with memories in such a mundane, remote place. She thinks of this world as a mundane place? That's confusing. Yaso Inaba may be in the countryside, but I don't think it's as bad as people say it is. I don't know, a lot of people died here! This girl Elizabeth suddenly bows elegantly Margaret to me. Is indeed my sister's name. Can I take that to mean that you are another guest of that room? I see. So she's Margaret's sister. That will explain why she reminds me of her. Elizabeth son, huh? Well, I guess that's the case. It's true that there was a time when I visited that room. Igor, Margaret, now Elizabeth. Seems there are more people who call that place home than I thought. Where are the twins? Uh, in the nursery. <laughs> I think I'm glad I met Margaret the last time. Velvet Room here? Did Margaret send you with a message or something? I am currently utterly neglecting Theodore? my duties. Is that Who? So? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Alice, I pretend I do not see it. Who is this Theodore you speak of? <laughs> I decided not to bother asking her that. I met so many different people over the last year, but trying to have a conversation with this girl 
It's like trying to ride a wild horse. She's going to ignore the direction I'm trying to steer us towards. And just veer off whenever she wants. That sounds like Elizabeth, alright. Best to just hold on and go along for the ride, then. Maybe if I pay attention, she'll tell me something worth my time. Even if I try to ask her any questions, she'll likely just be confused anyway. Just as I'm having a thought, the girl seems to have noticed my hesitation and starts to talk about herself. Her eyes are lit with a sincere passion. She really is a hard one to read. I have a certain desire. It may take a very long time for it to be realized. In order for my wish to be granted, I require a power much greater than what I have. The power of the wild card that changes bonds into strength. I have a feeling that the key lies there. I know a little about the wild card, but... I feel that the first glue to granting my wish lies within that the power. The Blue? Blue? Influenza. Something along those lines. Influenza. She's having trouble coming up with the right words, but I can hear the sincerity in her speech. Probably. I do wonder if Atlas will go beyond with uh, this door narrative that they're going with. We'll see in due time, or we won't see. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's worth to ask how she knew I had that power, or where she found out about it. Just as I'm struggling to follow the meandering path of her conversation, she brings up an outrageous suggestion. Might I suggest that you and I... Fight? Hey, what? Oh, you're hitting on me. Let's fight. <laughs> Hi, what? Someone please tell me how she reached a conclusion that was a good idea. I don't think I have a chance of talking her out of it, though. But of course, I have to try. So I say, we're going to fight. Oh, how excited this is making me. My expectations are ascending skyward at mock speed. To be direct, I'd like for you to show me the potential slumbering within you. Um, let me make sure of something, just in case. You understand what I'm saying, right? There's no illusions at work? Such parlor tricks can get stuffed! I see. So you're actually in your right mind here. That's kind of, uh, impressive. Well, maybe she understood what I meant when I mentioned the illusions. If that's so, then she at least must have some idea of what's going on around here. Tough stuff is into a trash can. I actually fought a Margaret two days ago. Oh, not Margaret, a Elizabeth two days ago on ranks. Um, she did, in fact, stuff me into a trash bin. I did record that fight, so I'll be on YouTube at some point. But, uh, yeah, I ran to an Elizabeth. I, I had no idea what was going on. They, like, blew me back. <laughs> The huge leather bound book in her hands opened, as if by itself. A torrent of power pours from the open book with a blue light. I can't believe that this strange girl has such unimaginable power. She seems so aloof. No, maybe more correct I call it an air of imminent violence. Alright, I won't be able to hold back. To be honest, I was really only saying that in the hopes of bluffing her. I have absolutely no room to hold back in this fight. I hurried cast I hurriedly cast off my fear and focus on the upcoming battle. There's no room for doubt. I need to hit her with my full strength from the start. Even though I were to fight her with the intent of killing her, I'd be lucky I'd be lucky not to be ending up dead myself. Wait, that's how I feel. Hey, that's a reference to uh, like uh, the secret boss fights. Fight like you intend to kill. Otherwise, you will regret it. Regret it. Regret it. Regret it. Oh. Nice. <laughs> that spooked me. Thanks for the six month resub. Now IT lets me send IT. Oh, you slept an hour ago? Classic stream lamps. Final. Final. Ah! Ah! She put me in a book. I have negative penalty already? How? Is this the extent of your story? Impressive. Impressive. Here, impressive. It's 
go Izanagi. We're waiting for this. She's clapped me of cards. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got PTSD. Dude, for like story mode, it should at least be a uh, best of three. <laughs> Just when I thought I managed to throw her off balance. Elizabeth's song gets back up elegantly, as if nothing had just happened. Suddenly, I feel an intensity build in the air. As best of three in P4AU? Okay, good. Don't tell me she hadn't been taking this seriously at all up until now. The next moment, I'm swallowed into a torrent of power, like a leaf being blown into the air. Not the slightest understanding of what's happening. My vision blurs as I'm spun about. Before I can, I can uh, tell up from down, the floor jumps towards me and I'm slammed into the ground. Am I going to lose? He's a Nagi! As my consciousness fades, I see the faces of my friends and Agisan. All those I'd fought up against until now. Haha. <laughs> it's like that story when you see your light flash before your eyes, just before you die. Am I dying? Can I really accept that? It's not over. I haven't lost yet. I can still fight. I've come so far. I can't lose heart now. I desperately force my legs to move and manage to stand up again. Why did I think they ported P4 AU all alone? Oh, they did. I see you. <laughs> I am quite content with this outcome. But it comes with it the Persona 4 Arena story, which is cool. Strength. The unyielding torrent of power suddenly seizes without warning. Is it over? Even as I come to understand that, I continue to stand stock still, unable to move. You were at the of your yeah, it is really cool. I'm actually grateful for that happening. In actuality, your heart almost gave in during your struggle with me, but each time you faltered, the many hearts supporting you gave you strength, helping you to rise again. <sighs> she cuts herself off and nods to herself, as if to confirm some suspicion. This was truly an intriguing battle. I believe our encounter has borne much flute. Flute? Flu? Chimneys. In any case, I am quite pleased. Even after a battle, she acts like that. I feel like a fool for believing that she would re she really would have killed me, even if it felt like real at the time. Can't believe any of this. My legs give out under me, and I sink to the ground. Or maybe she understands how I feel. Elizabeth Song looks straight into my May eyes. May I ask you something? To continue fighting in order to prevent an undesirable future. It is a path of endless hardship. Would you still choose to walk it? Margaret has said something similar just before this tournament had begun. How I had overcome the ordeal concerning last year's cases and opened the door. Margaret and Elizabeth Son's words come together in my mind. Yeah, working for a better tomorrow isn't just a one-time thing. The tomorrows keep coming. Opening the door is necessary, but it's not what's truly important. What's more important is making sure you follow the path that's beyond the door. Only once you have that path in mind, does it matter whether you've opened the door or not. That's how I feel. I would keep fighting for the future we want. Elizabeth Son smiles. It seems a former dweller of the Velvet Room is pleased with my answer. She must have chosen a path of her own at some point, and is doing everything in her power to see it through. Maybe I'm jumping to conclusions, but I feel as if I'm able to understand her a little better now. Well, oh! Oh! oh wait, no! No social link! <laughs> With this, Elizabeth briskly walks out of the room. She caused me so much trouble. I've always learned something about myself as well. I think I'll call it a draw. As I wave goodbye to Elizabeth, I hear Igasan get into her feet behind me. I... Are you alright? 
You shouldn't force yourself to move. I was concerned at first, but I guess San doesn't seem to be very hurt, or damaged, or whatever you would say. She was likely just knocked out. I had absolutely no chance of winning if I'd gone easy on her either. This is getting ridiculous. How many OP Persona fine. users are there? We've only just met, and yet you're worried about a machine like myself. Huh? Isn't that normal? I guess on last of my confusion. Seeing you smile like that? I don't know. I just can't think of you as a machine. You have a heart, right? Then it doesn't matter whether you're man or machine. Agasan stops laughing and thinks deeply for a moment. But after a few seconds, she looks back up at me with a serious look in her eyes. You have defeated me in single combat. That will make it difficult for me to continue forward. But I believe I can trust you. Will you listen to my mission directive? I have no reason to say no. I look into Aigasan square in the eye and nod reassuringly. And so, Aigasan told me about her directive, and it was truly surprising. There was another case involving personas and shadows outside of Inaba, even before our adventure last year. She is a weapon with a heart, created with the express purpose of wielding a persona to fight the shadows. She believes that this current situation came to be because someone had stolen a similar weapon and caused it to enter the TV world. So, there's another girl robot with a heart like you? And she's the cause of all this? We came to this world to retrieve her. My older sister, the fifth generation anti-shadow suppression weapon, Labris, is in this world somewhere. Nanako, Miss President, her shadow, and now Labris. I have a mountain of tasks I accomplish now. But, even though I have a lot to do, I can't ignore any of it. Tell me more about Labris, and I'll do what I can to help you get her back. Unfortunately. I guess on ex expression clouds. She said that she was a machine, but she really is no different from a human. As I ponder this, I listen to what she has to say. It's discouraging. So you don't know what she looks like, what she can do, or what equipment she's loaded with. Basically, all she can tell me is that Labyrinth is a robot who's built to look like a girl. Wait a second. I didn't meet a girl I didn't know in the TV world. Miss President. Can Miss President be... Labyrinth? Is there a possibility that she looks... Well, more human than you? You mentioned earlier that she was your older sister. So I assume she was built before you. But My sister was an older model, a prototype for the fifth generation to be exact. It's doubtful that she would look more human than myself. Then there's no way Miss President could be Labrys. I could tell at first glance that Igasan was a machine. Miss President appears to be completely human. Never once considered that she might not be human until just now. But that just makes things even more complicated. What in the world is going on inside the TV? All right. In any case, I'll keep an eye out for her. But right now, I'm heading to the announcement room. If Labrys is the cause of this, then I'm bound to meet up with her eventually. I shrug slightly. I don't want to be so grave. I guess I'm going to sense something I'm trying to do. It smiles. Thank you. I will trust my sister's fate to you. Of course. I give I guess I'm a determined nod and run out of the classroom. But man, what a busy golden week. Have to make sure Nanako's okay. Find Miss President, unmask whoever's masquerading as Teddy, and now search for Labyrinth somewhere in here. If this wasn't happening, I'd be kicking it with my friends at the Juness food court. Yukiko was trying to be coy, but I'm pretty sure that big bundle she was carrying was a box lunch she'd made for us. As to how my taste, well... Let's not get sidetracked. I'm sure we'd all have enjoyed it anyway. Eventually, I would have called Nanako over and would have bought some snacks together. There were things I wanted to buy from the Shinroku store. Maybe I could have made it to Soji Daigaku in time to buy the last of her special croquets. I want to talk with the owner of the Daidara and get some books from the Yomanaido bookstore. I had a steak bowl at Aya. Hung out with the fox, the tattoo, 
Tatsumi Shrine. Waited for my uncle so we could have dinner, and tomorrow I would have gone fishing. If the one who ruined my vacation and caused all these problems is the same person who stole Labrys. And if they truly brought Nanako back into the TV world. I will never let them go for that. I'll make them pay. Remember how hype I got over for, for Fox? Fox got a family? Really? As I run on, I come across yet another blue door. Perhaps a sign that I need to calm down. True. May have lost my cool for a moment. Someone here? Again? I reach towards the door with a relaxed smile. Dude, no son of Kanji yet. Margaret's in her usual position. I glance around to see if there's anyone else in here. It looks like her nutcase of a sister is in here. Did you never max out the fox? I did max out. I did max out the fox. I just haven't beaten New Game Plus yet. Some trouble, though this may mean that I'm not the only one who is drawn Or maybe to I haven't been paying attention. Potential. There's a hint of tenderness towards her sister in her words. Her sister must be important to her. I can tell from the look in her face. Do I look like that when I talk about Nanako? Margaret pulls herself together and speaks again. You have gained a new resolve by overcoming many doubts and falsehoods. A new resolve. And I you find myself down again. The threshold of truth. But Van's hearts are mutable. Oh, I haven't beaten New Game Plus yet. And in the main game of Golden, I never ranked 10 the Fox. Yeah, I was too I slow. But this will be a difficult and too annoyed. End. Are you equal to the challenge? But I'm in November right now for New Game Plus, and I'm already at rank 10, so... I'll be able to see it once I've done that. Cool. If I have my friends, if I'm not alone, I can do it. I see. Margaret nods slightly in response. I have heard your answer, but it's not enough. Remember what I told you before? The heart is shaken more by a single action than by a thousand words. As she smiles, my vision begins to blur. I hear words be uh, being repeated. I have reached the threshold of the truth. Everything that's happened during the course of this case runs through my mind. The new appearance of the TV world, this tournament pitting us against each other, the student council president, and a fake teddy. My encounter with a weapon with a heart, Aigasan, searching for his sister Labrys and the determination I've gained through these constant battles. What I must accomplish. How do I show what I've decided through my actions? Actions over words, huh? Seems that the number of invisible walls have decreased. Could this mean that the end is near? Just as I think that, I hear a familiar voice. I hope the end's That's near. <laughs> that was Miss President's voice. It was coming from the door to the announcement room. I finally made it. I open the door to the announcement room and rush inside. Hmm, you're finally here. Hello, Sensei. Congratulations. How does it feel to have won the P1 Grand Prix? The general smirks at me as I pass through the door. Behind him, Miss President and Rise. When the two of them see me, Miss President looks confused, while Rise's face lights up with joy. Uh, there you are, Senpai. You're late. I have to stay cautious of the general, but I signal to the girls that everything will be alright. The general's closer to them than I am. I can't afford to make any reckless moves just yet. And, there's one more thing I need to know. 
Teddy, where's Nanako? I look around the announcement room, but Nanako is nowhere to be found. The general's face distorts with an ugly glee. Nanachan's right here. See? Slowly, the general extends the arm that was held behind him. And there was Nanako! Her arms are clutched to her chest. She slowly takes a few steps towards me, obviously frightened. Nanako! After taking a step forward, I notice something bizarre. The general disappeared? For a brief instant, my full attention had been focused on Nanako. The general had been standing directly behind her, but now he's gone. How could he have gone somewhere else that quickly, right in front of me, without me noticing it? While I'm confused about the general's disappearance, Nanako weakly calls to me. Being in the TV world has obviously taken a toll on her. She totters towards me unsteadily, looking ready to collapse at any moment. I can think of the general later. We must save Nanako! Senpai, no! Nanako-chan's not there! Nanako's not here. What is she saying? She's right here. Just so Oh, she smiled! Oh, no! Jump scare! Incoming! Stuff is alright. I try to look into Nanako's face once more. And in her eyes, I saw madness. Oh, so close! Just a little more and Sensei would have been a goner! You bastard! I barely reacted in time to draw my sword to block the attack. The general suddenly appeared out of nowhere to attack me with his cane. I got a good look at him as our weapons clashed together. I see the madness in his face. The same madness that I had seen in Nanako's only a moment before. That's when I notice that Nanako has disappeared. What's going on? You've got it wrong, Senpai. It's all been him from the beginning. He can make whoever's looking at him see him as someone else. So he's not actually taking on other forms? No, he's just distorting the things you see and hear. That's right. The enemy is able to control what I see and hear. I'd realized that after all the battles I'd had today. But seeing Nanako made me forget all that. The general laughs at this. <laughs> it's hard for me to show someone who isn't here. But you actually saw this Nanako girl? You're hopeless. Just like how my friends hadn't actually gone crazy before our fights, Nanako had never been brought into this world in the first place. The appearance before me is a fake. He distorted our senses all to make us suffer. But, just as I thought, he couldn't deceive Risei's persona's abilities. That's why he kidnapped her, to keep her from warning us during his tournament. Now that I know that, I push the general's cane away and jump back towards the girls in order to distance myself from him. Good. Now I'm between them and the general. I then look straight at the one behind this bizarre situation. Who in the world are you? <laughs> you still can't tell? Seriously. The level of intelligence around here. Fine then. Here. Get a good look. Uh oh. <laughs> Volume warning. Be careful. You <laughs> <laughs> see a lot? I'm not surprised. Enjoy it once you get sick of it later. Shadow. The true self. That's my face. 
Uh oh. You can't skip it over in the other stories? I have no idea. I saw metal limbs, golden eyes, a ponytail, and a mirror image of Miss President's face, even though she was standing well, behind me. You wanted, you wanted to see what I am, didn't, didn't you? you? Why. Why does she look like me? That's its true form. That thing is your shadow. This is a shadow? She really came from inside me? Risei tries to call Miss President, but the girl shakes her head in denial and squeezes her eyes. Can we just have dialogue talk? Like, we don't need a... <laughs> oh, man. You just have to see it every time in everyone's perspective. The way she was able to run so fast without so much as breathing heavily, even in the TV world. The sense of wrongness that I had when Miss President had asked me about killing my friends. The way she avoided telling me her name, that superhuman strength when she hit Chie, and that incredible jump to get away from us. And the Shadow's ability to interfere with the senses of other people. Just as Margaret has said, all the pieces to the puzzle were laid out before me. They've all come together, and now I can see the truth! She's indeed Labyrus. Labyrus, another weapon with a heart, stolen by some unknown and thrown into the TV world, created the school, and forced us to fight our friends. This deep-rooted depression regarding her past memories. All this took in the form of Labyrus' shadow, who manipulated everyone here. Labyrus, don't look away. If you don't accept her, she'll get even stronger. Miss Prez, Labyrus only shivers when I call out to her. There has to be some reason why she believed that she was the student council president. But, that's just a disguise. More for herself than us. No matter how comfortable it is, it's only there to clatter her eyes from the truth! I don't know what your past was like. It There's no need for this mind memories. dialogue. Yeah, not really. Like, it's cool to think what We're the characters are thinking, but, like, we don't need it every time. You really don't. I, I see it as padding. Yeah, it's way too much. <laughs> you hear that, me? Your friend is trying to tell you something. Too bad he doesn't understand at all. These friends are so hopelessly naive. I don't think I noticed when I first played since I was immersed immerse in the story. That's fair. A shadow laughs sheerly. What it's like. Having to murder one another, that sadness, and pain, and anguish. Everything went black, and I was always left alone. I'm a weapon, a machine made only to fight. No human can understand my suffering. Stop! I've had enough! I'm human, I'm not like that! This is a good... Don't say it, Labyrinth! Shadow's eyes gleam with golden light. Uh oh, here it comes! Mechanical. He done done. I'm less, I'm hungry, bro. <laughs> I'm hungry, and I just want to go play Monster Hunter. It's just uh, there's so much of the uh, the inner mind dialogue to be continued.
Dun, dun, dun. So it's over? I gotta do the other stuff first. I see. Alright! Well, that's you know Rikami's story, then. Interesting. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh... I guess we're done for now. I thought I'd have to do uh, a bit more, but if I do the other stories, that's fair. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know Rikami's story. It was about three hours. Yeah, it's been two hours and 43 minutes from where I'm looking at. Uh, yeah, we'll end it here. So, uh, next time we'll tackle Yosuke's story. Hooray! And we'll see what's going on from his point of view and all that. Ah, uh, that was lame. Yeah, they tease you. I know Ultimax is, like, when it gets more into the meaty stuff. But yeah, uh, the gameplay of this game's cool. Uh, hopefully I'll get better. I've played uh, a lot of Dragon Ball Fighters. It took me like a year to like actually figure out how the mechanics work and all that stuff. Because I never really played fighting games before then. So uh, hopefully I learned soon too. Fight me today. Bro, I have to like... I love this game. There's a time and place for everything, but not now. Alright? Time and place for everything, but not now. I need to put food in me Persona right now arena, before I die. Ultimax. But uh, yeah, that does it for this stream. So thank you all for watching and sign our.